Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Albert Potato. This is Project Hospital, that's right, with the brand new Infectious Diseases DLC. And in the last episode, we successfully got our isolation unit up and running. That's right. If you want to be, if you want to be in this area, you have to wear a mask. You have to be protected from all of the possible contagions that are floating around uh, in this part of the hospital. We actually already have two patients in the in the beds over here. Uh, what have you got? Rat bite fever and uh, per peritonitis. It's a disease that I can't pronounce. What's new there? Anyway, yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, I like the fact that it's sort of completely independent from the rest of the hospital. But, uh, but there we go. Oh, you're taking the mask off. Can you keep your mask on, actually? I feel like maybe you shouldn't take your mask off when you're in here. Let me see if I can just, uh, modify that real quick. Yeah, so this entire, this entire room is gonna be set, this entire area is gonna be set as biohazard? No, apparently I can't do that. Apparently I can't do that. No issues whatsoever. Well, as long as the doctors, as long as the doctors feel comfortable when they're in the, uh, when they're in the room, that's fine. Oh, look at that. That's the brand new, that's the brand new stretcher. The brand new, oh, look at that. That is, that is the brand, that is the brand newest disease on the block. Uh, highly contagious. Highly, highly, highly contagious. Very, very, very interesting. Complex antiviral therapy in order to, uh, in order to cure in order to cure that. Okay, I didn't realize, I didn't realize that we had, uh, we had a case of that in the hospital. But I guess that makes, I guess that makes perfect sense. Either way, that department's looking pretty darn good. I'm really, 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 really happy with it. So what I kind of want to do is I want to keep an eye on the thing, you know, I want to keep an eye on the department over here. I want to make sure that nothing, nothing happens. We're almost certainly going to have to get some more isolation units because, I mean, three isolation units, we filled them all up within like a day and a bit. So, yeah, we're probably going to need to expand there. But you know what? We're going to we're gonna consider that in the context of the whole hospital. Uh, I'm quite conscious of the fact that we need to try and pursue as many, as many departments as we possibly can. Uh, we do have a mission to open an internal medicine department, and that is going to give us a $20,000 government grant, which would be really, really nice to, to get. We also want to just start working through the, you know, the insurance grants because I, uh, I want the money. Uh, for example, accepting... Accepting Medicare, that would be that would be great because we're going to be able to treat 40,000 patients. 40,000 40, patients. We're going to be able to treat 45 patients for a $50,000 government grant, which I'm very, very interested in. However, 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 I'm pretty apprehensive about accepting Medicare patients because let's be brutally honest, right? It's like I'm not going to be able to treat as many patients as we're going to get sent. Like that's just a thing that we have to that we have to consider. Uh, yeah, it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I think at the moment our hospital is like uh, a bit over capacity I would say we're maybe at hundred and twenty percent of our capability. We're accepting 84 patients We were accepting whatever it was 54 before we accepted Medicare to, to get the grant, but I think that we're, we're at about 120 percent of capacity I reckon we can probably treat about 40 to 50 patients effectively like properly properly treat them but that's okay. Anyway, internal medicine. We need to get an internal medicine department online. Um, we're probably going to need to make sure that we get uh, a few bits and bobs elsewhere as well, including more rooms for the general surgery department. The general surgery department has just ballooned. It's huge. It's very, very huge. Uh, as ever, by the way, thank you very much to everyone who is commenting on the series. What have you got? Valley fever? What's the issue? You cannot be put into isolation hospitalization. No free bed in working ward. Um, what? And you can't be treated with this. Hospitalization required for the treatment is not available. I, yeah, okay, so here's the thing. This is part of the problem, is that we are out of isolation units. We're out of isolation units, and unless I want to take out even more cash, I, I don't think that, I don't think I want to do that. I, I don't think I... I don't think I want to do that at all, unfortunately. Yeah, let's not... Let's not do that. You know what? You can just leave. That's fine. That's fine. Just leave. Just leave. We we can't... We can't commit any more resources to our infectious diseases department quite yet. What have you got? You've definitely got something nasty. But I, I don't know what. Oh my... Okay, you know what? 
Tell a lie. I'm gonna commit more resources to the isolation department. I mean, we need to. We need to. We can't continue like this. We can't continue just turning people down. We gotta. We gotta step up. We gotta get in a, a brand new, brand new isolation unit. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying before, I was very rudely interrupted by the uh, by the video game. Uh, thank you as ever to all of the comments. Greatly appreciated. I do indeed like to receive comments on the series because it, you know, gives me a good steer on on where I need to go and uh, what I need to do. I should have done that in the other order, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, we've still got plenty of credit. We've still got plenty of credit that we can that we can use. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, so a lot of the comments were basically saying uh, along the lines of uh, the the prefabs are pretty space inefficient. You can you can create a much more space efficient layout if you if you design it yourself. I know that that's the case. I, I do know that that's the case. Uh, hold up. Let me just uh, mark all of this as biohazard area. Uh, yeah, I do know that that's the case. However, I do like using the prefabs just because it looks a little bit tidier. And to be honest, uh, prefabs often have... Prefabs often have, for example, in the uh, in the labs up here, for example. How are the labs doing, by the way? We should have a little look-see. Eight patients waiting there, eight patients waiting there. Okay, good. So it's spread equally over both of the hematology labs. Anyway, yeah, so this lab, for example, has got, like, a whole bunch of glassware, which means that multiple chemists or multiple biotechnicians, whatever, they can all interact at the same time, um, which is really, really nice. It means that we can have multiple staff working at the same time. Uh, so, yeah, it's just something to consider. Just something to consider. The space and efficiency needs to be balanced with the fact that the prefabs come with a, a bunch of extra bonus bits of tech that we can that we can use from time to time. You're leaving. That's fine. Okay. Treating 45 patients per day. We're about to hit that. We're about to get a whole bunch of money. Uh, that's what we like to see. We like money. Okay. Throw it into three times speed. Brilliant. Treat 45 patients per day. Excellent. Treat 50 patients per day as well. And that's going to increase clinic patients per day to 35. I mean, I'd rather not have to deal with that, to be honest. I mean, 35 is a lot of patients. It's a lot of patients. Patient can't be fully treated. You cannot be treated. Why the heck not? Why the heck not? We'll give you... Hospitalization is not available. Yeah, we can we can treat you. And we give you that. Excellent. You cannot be regularly hospitalized, though. Irritating. Treat 50 patients per day. Excellent. Employees leveled up. Brilliant. Treat 55 patients per day. I dare say that we might be able to hit that as well. Treat 55 patients per day. We get a $62,000 government grant. This is exactly why I turned the uh, the Medicare the Medicare grant on for the day, and then we're probably going to turn it off because I'm terrified of I'm terrified of dealing with this. Uh, general surgery department doesn't have enough stretchers. Am I not placing down a new stretcher in the general surgery department every 20 minutes at this rate? Certainly feels like I am, to be honest. Right, general surgery department, nurses, stretcher. Excellent. Where are, where are all these stretchers going? I feel like they're being I feel like they're being lost. You've got malaria. I mean, you can be ICU hospitalized, right? And then you can be treated with anti-malarial medication. I'm assuming that that needs to be Yeah, you need to be hospitalized for that. And apparently you're just leaving. Okay, so you know what? Ignore ignore me. Again, I can try ICU or isolation hospitalization, but that uh, that apparently that apparently is not what people are interested in. Fine, patient is collapsing. Okay, brilliant. Treat sixty patients per day. That gives us yet more, yet more uh, Medicare patients coming our way. Patient can't be fully treated. IV infusion. Can we not just hospitalize these people, please? Like, what is what is the issue? What is the issue here? We we can isolate, we can isolate these people and then give them. And then give them the stuff that they need. Yeah, going to bed. Yeah, excellent. Another patient is collapsing. That's totally fine. Okay. I need to not get distracted with, with running the hospital. I need to I need to also Thank you very much, video game. I need to also think about about new departments, because new departments give us new opportunities. Collapsed patient is being transferred to another hospital. Honestly, I don't blame I don't blame any individual who wants to go to another hospital. I frankly would not feel comfortable being treated in uh in this hospital. Again, it's like there seems to be some sort of issue with hospitalizing there seems to be some sort of issue with hospitalizing uh, infectious diseases patients. I know that we are at full capacity now, which is fine. 
but that just doesn't make sense. Required room, DID office, diagnostic unit, regular ward at uh, Department of Infectious Diseases slash ICU. DID office. I mean, there is a DID office, right? The DID office is just the regular doctor's office. So why can why can that not be not be addressed? Uh, that's weird. Yeah, that's very weird. Highly, highly, highly weird. Is it perhaps some weird interaction with the... No, it's not some inter weird interaction with that. Okay, I have no idea. Patient that couldn't be treated is leaving? I don't know. Maybe we'll just reset tomorrow. We'll reset tomorrow. We'll see what the heck happens. Uh, we might not be able to treat 65 patients. Again, look at you. Respiratory cr crypto? What the heck? I have no idea what that actually is. And again, this, you need to be, you need to be hospitalized. But it says you don't need to be hospitalized. Required room DID office. Hospitalization required for the treatment is not available. Okay. Hospitalization is apparently required. Uh, so yeah, I, I could add, I could add more beds. I could add more beds. I don't feel comfortable about doing that. I, I think we, I think we shouldn't do it. Uh, long wait for treatment. You're waiting for the operating room to be free. But the thing is, we are, like, full steam ahead with surgeries. We've actually only got one surgery to conduct this evening. Uh, we're already we're already operating at this moment in time. Blood draw. Who does the blood draw? Who does the blood draw? Where does it take place? Could I get... Could I get intel on that? I think it's a doctor. I think it's a doctor that does the blood draw. We should maybe see if we can hire, like, an additional doctor. Because when the surgery is is ongoing at the at the general surgery department, there is like no one else who is ready to step up and actually do doctory things. So you know what? Let's hire two brand new doctors. Just you know, just regular doctors that can uh, that can help out. I tell you what, maybe we need to get a yeah an evening an evening technologist or two. Excellent good stuff so two additional two additional technologists they may very well be idle at this moment in time but you know i'm, I'm not super duper worried about that we we should be able to we should be able to overcome that difficulty let's just get this area expanded as a corridor so that it can actually get cleaned great hey what do you know treat 65 patients a seventy-four thousand dollar government grant i mean that is excellent that is really 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 good i'm gonna stop the the medicare patients from uh, from coming in Seems harsh, but frankly, it seems very, very necessary given the fact that, I mean, we would end up with like a bazillion of them, and I really do not want to, do not want to deal with that. Collapsed patient can't go to bed. Yeah, okay, you have got, you have definitely got some, something wrong. Ebola, or Marburg. What the heck is that? Uh, you are waiting for, you're waiting for a bed somewhere. I mean, I'm assuming that it's. I'm assuming can I can I not stick you into observation? Patient is already hospitalized at a higher at a higher place. I mean, how on earth how on earth do we get you out of the trauma center more quickly? Collapsed patient is being transported to another hospital. There's no free bed in observation. Uh what are you talking about, video game? What are you talking about? There is literally not accessible for patients. Oh is this okay. Has this been Is the is there a problem here? Is this where is this where the issue is arising from? Can I move you to observation now? Hospitalized, waiting for transport to bed. Maybe that was my bad in the uh, in the last episode when I when I tried to restrict this area. Oh, good. Apparently, that is that is definitely made a difference. That's really really good. Okay, good. So now we can actually filter people out of the trauma center much more effectively. I hope. Uh, we did end up losing a couple of patients there, as in losing them to other hospitals, but that's fine. Uh, you are definitely going to get sorted. Okay, look, I need to stop focusing on hospital running, and I need to I need to start thinking about where we want to go in terms of hospital design. I cannot get waylaid. I must not let myself get waylaid by the uh, the mundanities of, of hospital maintenance and upkeep. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get ourselves a brand new floor. That's 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 cool. We're only 14 minutes in. Let's add a brand new floor. Copy wall tiles from the top floor. Um, yeah, you know what? Do it. Build it. 
build it, build it, build it. It's completely free, so we basically get all of this, all of this setup already as a foundation, which is really, really, really nice indeed. We're gonna see if we can try and get an internal medicine department. The reason that we're gonna try and get an internal medicine department is it is a mission, and we know that we can get a twenty thousand, uh, a twenty thousand government grant if we complete the the mission to get an internal medicine department up and running. Now, the problem with doing this, the problem with doing this is that for sure, for sure, it's going to, you know, in the first instance, cost more, cost more than $20,000. You know, that's that's something that's going to happen. Uh, get two doctor's offices. Yeah, that seems, that seems kind of reasonable. Uh, we'll get a restroom in here. Brilliant. You know, carbon cutout sort of situation, which is good. I like it. I like doing this. We don't have to build absolutely everything at this moment in time. We can... We can uh, we can come back and build it build stuff later, but I'm gonna build the stuff that I know we're gonna need at least a bit of, you know, some of. There we go. So that goes in there. High dependency unit goes in here. Excellent. So that looks really really nice. Diagnostic units. Diagnostic unit can go in here. Another diagnostic unit can go in there. That seems reasonable. What else? Cardiography unit. Special procedures unit. Special procedures is a required department there lounge we don't need a lounge cardiography i mean we could stick a cardiography unit over here uh i guess yeah i guess that's fine it's in the place of a doctor's office but i mean don't even worry about it so that cost about a hundred grand that cost about a hundred grand give or take how is that looking that's everything that's everything with the exception of a lounge which i i mean i don't really, i don't really think that we need a lounge we do need a waiting room and we do need a reception yeah so you know what? Let's zone a reception just like we've zoned downstairs. And we'll zone a waiting room as well. A cleaning closet. We'll get a cleaning closet set up over here as well. That's cool too. Okay, high level of certainty. And now what we need to do, now what we need to do, manually, manually build up a reception. Excellent. Manually build up a reception. Give the receptionist a stool. You know, a little bit of little bit of discomfort to keep them on their toes. Love to see it. Let's get some actual nice glass doors here. Wonderful. And we're missing the staff member, but that's okay. That's fine. Don't even worry about it. Not even slightly. And then we get a whole bunch of benches. A whole bunch of benches in the waiting room. This is, of course, the waiting room for the doctor's offices. We'll get ourselves a Q machine, which I honestly think is one of the best bits of tech in the entire darn video game. Uh, yep. And what else? Does that Info TV not want to work? There we go. Okay, apparently it works there. Vending machine, throw that in over there. Brilliant. And a coffee vending machine as well for good measure down over there. Wonderful. Okay. So as soon as we hire the staff for this department, we are ready to go. Receptionists, boom. Technologists, boom. Doctors, excellent. That's all that we need. That's all that we need. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Let's get two doctors. Oh, man, these are expensive doctors. We'll get one doctor for the evening, too. Let's not bother with that. Uh, we need to get nurses. Oh, apparently I didn't even need to open hospitalization. It was literally just the clinic aspect. But you know what? We're, we're committed now, so uh, so there we go. We don't, need, we don't need any doctors to do any operations. Which is great. I mean, the the operative um, surgery trait is is good. Uh, that's, I'm happy that we've, that we've got access to it, but we don't we don't actually need it. So that is going to be all of the doctors that we need during the day and during the night. I suspect that we will need more. Don't don't get me wrong. We will almost certainly need more. But for now, for now, that's that's where we are. Okay, and just like that, we've got hospitalization at uh, at internal medicine open. Who is the most qualified doctor here? Kate Scott, you, you're pretty qualified. Congratulations, Kate Scott. There we go. Okay, so that's another department. That's another department completely open. We need to treat three patients per day. Next two available intern candidates for hire will be great, which is nice. Nice to see. We need to purchase three ambulances. I don't really want to purchase ambulances at this moment in time, uh, but that's that's totally fine. How are we doing general surgery-wise? How are we doing in terms of operations? We don't have any operations left to do. That's great to see. 
The observation rooms are being used much more frequently, which is really, really, really good. You are hospitalized waiting for a bed. You're just able to be regularly hospitalized, which is great. You just got rabies. Okay, are rabies not contagious? Apparently not. Apparently they are just not contagious even slightly. Patient is about to leave the clinic. Why are you about to leave the clinic? You're idle and you're idle too. What the heck is happening here? Brooke Anderson, can we, can I call you? What the heck is happening? Treat you high priority. There's no free bed uh, for regular hospitalization. I mean, that's a lie? That is a lie, there are four free beds for hospitalization, not accessible for patients? I mean, how do I make this accessible for patients then? Okay, is this, again, am I, like, messing with the, the whole... You know, this is a biohazard area. Like, that's okay, right? Like, it's it's fine. Perhaps this does not need to be a biohazard area. Perhaps it should be it should be changed around a little bit. Let me see if I can delete that. Okay, regularly hospitalize. See if that makes any difference for you there. Hospitalize, waiting for bed. Yeah, maybe that was the problem the whole time. Not accessible for patients. It is accessible for patients, though. It is definitely accessible for patients. Regular hospitalization. Patient is already hospitalized. I, I, I understand. I understand. I sympathize. But, I mean, like, how is this not accessible for patients? Everything that, uh, that I see leads me to believe that it is, in fact, accessible for patients. Okay, let me see if I can zone this as accessible for both staff and patients. Staff area only, patients must have an invitation. This is general surgery, what the heck am I doing? Okay, yeah, okay, get this zoned. Fine. I mean, this is not accessible for patients. How the heck are we gonna move the people in then? How, how the heck do we do it? Rabies, rabies immunoglobin. Sure. I get, like, I don't understand, I don't understand why you're not able to be, why you're not able to be moved to the regular ward over here. That makes, frankly, no sense to me, but, yeah, that's a bit of a weird one. That's a big bit of a weird one. Right, hold up. Patient is about to leave the clinic. Uh, you are about to leave the clinic, William Johnson. I suspect that you'll probably be waiting a little while longer because we have a serious backlog on our hematology stuff but maybe somebody can see see to you quickly after you get uh that you get your test results back that would be that'd be excellent patient waited too long and is being transported to another hospital again doesn't make sense to me why this area is not why this area is not in why it's not accessible for patients like what more needs to be what more needs to be said about it I mean, if I zone this as blue. What the heck? I not accept. There's a door, though. There's a door. Like, I'm... This is... It's not... What the heck is happening? And how are the biohazard areas able to be accessible to patients, but not the rest of the areas... This is a big, this is a big question mark in my mind. Also, holy cow, did you just see our, our cash shoot up? So that was because 8 o'clock rolled around, which was great. Uh, and all of the patients that are getting out of the hospital are getting out of the hospital right now, which is wonderful. Yeah, you, okay, you know what? I'm just going to send you to another hospital. Send you to another hospital. I have no idea why the heck you're not being moved to the regular hospitalization area. It's weird. It doesn't make sense. But get out of here. I know. Just cut our losses. Cut our losses. Okay. Jessica Anderson. Now, you very well may have an internal medicine issue. To be honest, I would anticipate that that is going to happen. You are being examined. Excellent. You've got what you need. You need to be... You need to be treated with that. And then you can get sent home. Excellent. Okay. You are going to be hospitalized in the internal medicine department. How exciting is that? How very, very exciting is that? That's cool. Okay, going back up to the internal medicine department. How are things looking up here? 
I mean, to be honest, things are looking good. I'm looking forward to treating three patients per day. I suspect that we're going to beast through that. We're going to absolutely fly through that. I mean, financially, by the way, we are doing good. I should have paid down my I should have paid down my loan, but I didn't want to because I liked seeing that amount of money in my in my bank account. That did make me happy. Right. So now we just need to keep an eye on now we need to keep an eye on this area, the infectious diseases area, just to make sure that it's all working. Because if it's not, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to take action. William Johnson, the fact that you weren't seen to is is mind blowing. How on earth are you not are you not being seen to? Also, you've definitely got something infectious disease related, so you know what? I'm gonna move you to the infectious diseases department. Yeah, we've got a lot of emergency patients coming in here. Have I still got Medicare on? No, I've got Medicare turned off. How the heck is... Okay, wow, I have a lot of patients coming in. I have 105% of patient intake because of the uh, the high prestige level. Don't get me wrong, that's lovely to see. I, I'm happy about it, but like, flip the neck, that is, that is kind of bonkers. Is it worth me getting some more emergency offices? I know I've already got like a whole bunch of emergency offices, but I truthfully feel like we maybe just need more. All of these rooms are already doctor's offices in emergency, and yet I still almost certainly need more. Um, yeah, where do we where do we throw these offices? Where do we throw these offices down? I, I mean, there are a couple of places which are sticking out to me as, as potential places where we could stick a, a doctor's office or two. Doctor's office six by six, you know, in, in here would be would be an option. We could uh, we could squeeze two in here by the looks of it. But then that's not going to leave anywhere for a corridor to go. Yeah. And it does need to be it does need to be somewhere in this vicinity. Maybe over here? I tell you what, that's not a bad that's not a bad placement. Yeah, okay, you know what? Let's do this. That's right. Okay. So, that's four additional doctor's offices. I know it looks kind of funky at this moment in time. Just wait a, wait a second, wait a second. You know, patience is a virtue and all that. Right, so, go into build mode, go into foundations. Give me a foundation corridor all the way down here. Excellent. Cost me six and a half grand, but that's a worthy, worthy, worthy price to pay. Throw that in there. Wonderful, so that's another one. So we've still got a four wide, a four wide area for a corridor down there. Wonderful. I am happy with that. That's looking, that's looking and feeling great. So we cut that off. Excellent. And I think that we should just be able to, well, first of all, very importantly, we need to get these garish floor tiles, don't we? Is it this one? It's the Lino, light Lino. Love a little bit of light Lino. Oh, I'm out of cash. Well, it's very important that we take out another 20,000 loan in order to in order to buy some light lino floor tiles. That's very, very important. Okay. And then all of this down here. Wonderful. Okay. So I'm not going to go too over the top. I'm not going to go too over the top. Let's hire some brilliant intern candidates. Yep. Excellent. And you and... We'll hire one more over here. So I think that that's probably going to be enough uh, enough additional doctor capacity. I think. I hope. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. So I'm not going to hire. I'm not going to hire any any additional doctors. We still got the doctor to hire for this office over here. Plus we've also got all of the uh, all of the night shift doctors, which we could pick up if we want to. Stabilization. Waiting for stabilization. Do we not have? Where are you? You've been waiting for stabilization for a long time. Uh, what is wrong with reserve for heart monitoring? Sarah, okay, okay, right. I, I, I see what's going on. We've got just too few. We've got too few doctors over here. Let's let's pump up the number of doctors that we have in this area because stabilizing people in the trauma center is pretty darn important. So let's do that. Let's also hire a couple of additional nurses so that we can just move patients around more effectively. There we go. There we go. And one more during the evening. I know, you know, we're increasing the cost of the cost of operating this department, but it does seem pretty essential given the circumstances that we have, like, fairly consistent ability to stabilize people 
in the trauma center. If we don't, you know, I can just I can smell problems coming down the uh, coming down the road, coming down the tracks. All right, so far so good. Only four people going untreated today. That's fine. I mean, look, we need to scale back some of our insurance companies. To be to be honest, we we really really do. I am so unconvinced that we can actually treat. Oh, go away. Go away with your general surgery stretcher nonsense. I'm not buying it. I ain't buying that even slightly. What's up with you? Hospitalized, transported to room. Okay, that's that's totally fine. That's totally fine. So far, so good. Patient is collapsing over here. Oh, you've got you've got the uh, the highly contagious the highly contagious virus that everyone is talking about. Uh, why on earth? Why on earth are you over here? Let's immediately get you into... Into... Well, you're going to the ICU, but, I mean, look, that's... I mean, frankly, it's too late. It's too late for the ICU. We need to get you into... We need to we need to get you into a an area where you're where you're not going to be able to completely infect everyone. Oh, that's I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So am I going to see people coming down with with the big C? Not the big C. The big C is something completely different. You get what I'm saying, right? Oh, look. Patient couldn't be treated as leaving. I can order isolation. I can order isolation. What the heck? What the heck is stopping us from actually just ordering isolation? That is so unbelievably strange. Either way, performing rehydration, excellent. So you're going to be fine because all of the treatments that we can do in the isolation unit can be done in can be done in the ICU, which is great, which is very very good. I'm still like unbelievably confused as to why we're just not able to we're just not able to to get this to make this door accessible. Like, what the what the heck am I doing? Like, okay, you know what? Let's see if we can remove this, and then regular ward. Yeah. Is it still not accessible to patients? Now it's entirely accessible to patients. Okay, well that's wonderful. That's really really great. Do I need to rezone this this area just entirely, or or something, or? Do I need to do do I need to do something about that? I, I don't know. I don't know. I think we I think we've fixed the problem now, which is great. Happy with that. We'll see if it makes any difference. Regular hospitalization at infectious diseases does seem pretty important to to get done. You're collapsing. You've got typhus fever. Oh my goodness. There are so many infectious diseases issues that we have. Like there are so many infectious diseases issues. How are we doing in the in the medical labs department? We are doing like as much as we can, but there are a lot of people coming with uh, we're looking for test results, which is kind of freaking me out a little bit. But that's okay. You know, we can just about tolerate that. How's the internal medicine department doing? Honestly, I thought it would be doing a heck of a lot better than it actually is, which is a little bit strange. Let me just go into internal medicine just for a second, and I'll grab myself a cleaning closet. See if we can. Maybe plonk down the blueprint of a cleaning closet over here. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's not perfect. It doesn't line up perfectly, but for now, it's it's good enough. Uh, the reason that we need a cleaning closet is that this area is an absolute mess. I think two will be fine. Yeah, okay, and then just give me, like, a whole bunch of corridors. So we get this zoned as a corridor. Anywhere that people are going to be traveling, like, really frequently, it needs to be zoned as a, as a corridor. Smaller corridors are technically better. Because I believe the cleaning staff clean it in chunks. Either way, that's looking pretty good. Happy with that. What can I say? Oh, you're collapsing and you're going to another hospital. That's fine. Okay, have we... We did it! Treat three patients per day at internal medicine. Next two interns available for hire will be great candidates. Enable hospitalization at internal medicine department for a $25,000 government grant, which is wonderful. Okay. We're down to only 80 grand in the hole. The good news is, is that we made a lot of money today. We made a lot of money. We made a lot of money. Now, obviously, staff wages are still to come out. They come out at 8 o'clock. 20,000, maybe. Yeah, about 20,000. About 20,000 in staff wages. That's that's fine. That's to be expected. But, you know, at the end of the day, 
we make about we make about 20 grand that that's not too shabby that is not too shabby at all we only treat 44 patients though that is that is rather a disaster there's no bed in in the icu i mean i don't think that i can do anything about that yeah i mean you're gonna be transported to another hospital the problem is with more patients with more seriously ill patients coming into the hospital like more patients are gonna have to be more patients are, what the heck are you doing weird uh more patients just need to be just need to be moved to the icu flipping heck okay this is there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff uh staff have been occupied for a long time don't worry it's just the night shift don't even worry about it emergency care what the heck are you doing everyone is everyone is prepping for surgery here hold up do we need to get more i think we need to get more yeah we need to get more internal medicine sorry not internal medicine we need to get more night doctors who are not on the surgery team. So you, yeah. So I can actually go into you and I can say, don't assist at surgery. We don't want you to do anything surgery related. Uh, so that hopefully you can better treat patients and give patients the attention that they need whilst they're not in the operating theater. Excellent. Okay. Robert Thomas, you seem to be a, a, reoccurring, a reoccurring problem. You need... Uh, you need to be exercised. I mean, why has nobody seen you? I have no idea, but that's completely fine. We can address that as quickly as we possibly can. There you go. Exercise. Patient has waited too long and is leaving. How on earth? How on earth are our patients still waiting too long? Are we are we just understaffed at night as well in the in the emergency department? I feel like we are. So let's hire some some interns to work uh, to work during the night. I suppose we only have like two doctors. It does make sense. It does make sense. Only two doctors. It's quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of, quite a lot of pressure to put on like uh, so few doctors. So you know what? We'll get a couple of, a couple of brand new, a couple of brand new docs to help work through the backlog. It's midnight. What happens at midnight? We pay our dead interest. That's about it. Publicity earned thanks to a famous influencer treated in your hospital attracts forty five percent more patients. I mean that is awful. I, I really do not want forty five percent more patients. I think we need to take action and just stop accepting patients from cheapo care uh, like we really cannot afford to we really cannot afford to keep on treating these patients i mean oh goodness gracious me oh goodness gracious me prestige yesterday by the way was only at 86 percent because we had so many flipping patients that were just being moved out of town i mean can we maybe turn off another can we turn off liver ty i think we maybe turn off liver ty yeah 37 patients honestly that sounds a lot more a lot more controllable so we'll just take oopsie corp at this moment in time right now can we turn a profit with just 37 patients i mean don't get me wrong it's going to be more difficult than than otherwise okay you the fact that you weren't able to to get treated is really really irritating um i'm assuming by the way yeah that our uh, our ICU is full. Our ICU is full, and I really want to expand the ICU because it is it is pretty it is pretty darn important. Patient waited too long. Long wait for an examination. Yeah. Okay. Look, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. The the sheer number, the sheer number of people that we have in this hospital is it's just too many. It's just too. It's just far too many. You know what? Give me, give me a reset. Give me a hard reset. I need a, I need to get, I need to get through this day. We need to get through this day. We need to get to the morning. Look, you know, we're, we're in, we're in for a big payout in the morning because we are at like almost full capacity. And when, when the hospital is at full capacity, whenever morning comes around, we're always in for a big amount of cash. Uh, regular hospitalization, that's fine. I can give you isolation hospitalization. I have no idea what you've got, but you've got something in the ICU category anyway. So that's fine, I guess. Uh, right, morning time. I'm waiting for 8 a.m., please. Thank you very much. 8 a.m. is going to come around. How much is it going to cost us in salaries? About 12 grand in salaries. That's fine. 8 a.m. is just around the corner, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. It's going to be great. Room workload statistics. What was critical? Emergency department, one, one room was critical. Three rooms... Three rooms in the radiology department are critical. Now, this is a problem because we have far too many, far, 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 far too many patients for all of the facilities that we have. 
One department was critical in the evening. Nothing was critical there. Okay, there are, it's quite a lot of stuff that's critical, actually. Okay, wait until 8 a.m. And I guarantee you, like, 20 grand is going to come flooding in. Just you wait. Just you wait. It is a little bit of a shame that this game, like, resets everyone. Or cures everyone at 8 o'clock in the morning. There we go. Okay, so look at that. 15, what is that? 15 grand, give or take. Yeah, so irritatingly, wasn't as much as I expected, but about 15 grand, about 15 grand of, uh, of, uh, of insurance payments came my way, which is really, really nice. But it is a little bit irritating how it happens all at, uh, all at once. Either way, hopefully, today is just gonna be a day that we can just chill out and we can just get, uh, we can get a good few, a good few people fixed up. That's what we're after, right? ICU hospitalization, that's true, is it, actually? No, there is a bed free. There's a bed free in the ICU. Patient is leaving. Yeah, I mean, look, this is, it's just a disaster. How are we having patients that are leaving? Like, that should not be occurring. That should not be occurring under the current circumstances. It just shouldn't be. We should be treating patients, like, really rather quickly. Especially in infectious diseases. I think that we've... I was trying to say, I think we've improved the quality of our care in infectious diseases. But no, this is this is bad. This is this is very, very bad. Where are you at this moment in time? You are... Yeah, okay. Well, we gotta send you home, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, a death is... A death is not good. I think that might be our first death, actually. Yeah. And it was a, a death via Ebola, which is not... Not good. Not good even slightly. I don't know how this contagious contagious nonsense works, by the way. We could be we could be secretly infecting half the flippin' staff. I don't think we are. Uh, I hope we're not. But you never know. You never know. Could be could be the case. Patient can't be fully treated. I mean, why on earth? Why on earth can you not be fully treated? Why can you not just be hospitalized? Regularly hospitalized, no free bed in a working ward. Is it because you need to be? Is it? Be, is it because you don't want to be hospitalized in ICU? Hospitalized in IC uh, in ICU in the isolation unit. Patient can't be fully treated again. Okay, so maybe we just need like way more regular beds. Is that what we need? I mean, sure, the only issue is, is that there's not really an area for, there's not really an area for us to put extra regular wards. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like the design as it stands, where, you know, progressively more and more, for the further into the hospital you go, the the deeper, uh, the deeper and more isolated it becomes. I mean, do we have a second floor in this building? We don't actually have a second floor in this building. Okay, no, I've added an extra floor on the top of the hospital. No, I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want a second floor on this building, I think. Yeah, here's my idea. Here's my idea. I've got an idea. Don't know why. Don't know why it doesn't include... The rest of the hospital that's that's fine i guess we've just got an extra floor for the sake of it cool anyway the point that i was going to make is let's see if we can ditch this room right here and then instead stick in an elevator shaft i look i'm 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 at a loss we gotta we gotta do we gotta do what we gotta do we gotta do what we gotta do and then i think Delete that. I know employee is going to have no workspace. I, I get it. It's fine. Don't don't perturb yourself too much. Give me an elevator. An elevator will fit in there. It'll fit in there exactly as soon as we're able to move this out here. Excellent. Then an elevator. Good stuff. Right, wonderful. Okay, so that's been placed down. That cost me rather a lot of money for some obscene reason. Uh, it's a little bit recessed from the from the walkway, but that's fine. Right, so then we grab what a four. 
a four depth walkway. We want to make sure that it's pretty much exactly the same above and below. Okay, just bring this out here. We can't actually because we're out of cash, but that's fine. Right, don't actually hate this. Don't actually hate this at all. Now, give me a blueprint for a uh, for a regular ward. Right, so something like that. That actually works shockingly well. Okay, two brand new regular wards. I like that. I like that a lot. So, this way, we don't actually end up... We don't actually end up dealing with the... The contagious issue, because we just move it to an entirely different part of the hospital. Okay, so get that all sealed off. Is this accessible for patients? It should be accessible for patients. Looks that way. It's actually a really, really, really short walk for all of the doctors that are providing care. So that's great. Yellow fever. I mean, regularly hospitalize you. Employee has no workspace. Oh yeah, we do need to replace... We do need to replace the cleaning closet so we can actually... Uh, we can actually ensure that the department stays clean. That is... Honestly... Quite an important aspect of this game, believe it or not. Making sure the corridors are kept tidy. Very important, very key. Alright. So, excellent in there. Beautiful. Okay, we got ourselves, we got ourselves, we got ourselves where we're going. Okay, uh, you need to be moved to, I mean, the isolation unit, to be honest. I have no idea why you've got that and you're not being moved to the isolation unit. I mean, that is just like straight up standard operating procedure, surely? Like, there is no way that you should be allowed to, to roam the streets with a highly contagious disease like that. Either way, I'm kind of hoping that with a few more regular hospitalization beds, we're going to have less issues in the infectious diseases departments. Okay, you're leaving. Charles Hall, you're leaving. That's fine. Treat five patients per day at the internal medicine department. 20,000 government grant. Lovely. Love to see it. Love to see it. Love to see it. Very, very good indeed. Purchase two ambulances is the, uh, is the next sort of mission. Now, I, I don't really like the idea of doing that, because if I do do that, then that's going to put more strain on the emergency department, more strain on uh, more strain on the observation room, more strain on the trauma center, and undoubtedly more strain on the ICU. I did say that today was like a little bit of a holding day. Patient got diagnosed incorrectly. Pancreatitis, you just need IV antibiotics. Fine. I mean, that's kind of unusual, to be honest, that 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 happened we have a high level of care here a high level of treatment should i say we have a high level of treatment pretty much everywhere i mean maybe i just accept the fact that patients are going to get diagnosed incorrectly the problem is when they're when they're operated on in the uh, in the general surgery area i tell you what here's an idea high level of certainty let's put the high level of certainty down to medium in the emergency department but we'll leave it on high for the general surgery department because surgery can only be conducted at the general surgery department, at least at the moment. I mean, we can get, like, neurology and whatnot. And we can get, like, a, you know, a neurology surgery operating theater. That's definitely something that we can do. Uh, but we, we obviously don't have that at this moment in time. Okay, medical labs. Why is medical labs so upset with me? Need critical. Patient satisfaction is... is I mean, non-existent. Hungry and bored. I mean, we should get a medical labs-specific canteen, to be honest. Yeah, if I have a little look at you, you can see... Need critical. Yeah, okay, look, we need to we need to do this. This is just, like, one of the quirks of the game. Uh, interestingly, the common rooms... The common rooms are occasionally accessed by, like, other members of staff. Like, they count as a shared room, right? So, so this common room that is used by... That is used by everyone is even used by flipping... Is, is even used by flipping uh, medical labs people. However, for some obscene reason, that just doesn't seem to happen as often as it should. So yeah, it's it's weird. Uh, can we build a restroom like over here or somewhere? Yeah, I guess like a restroom at the end of the corridor is, is entirely reasonable. Excellent. All right, wonderful. Happy with that. Does that feed into the back no it doesn't feed into the back of the the back of the room over there but that's fine uh, and then a common room i mean we do have like a space here for a common room but i 
feel like maybe we shouldn't do that. We should put in a common room over here. Yeah, common room over here seems entirely reasonable. I like the fact that we're building this hospital up in, in blocks. This is good. So we're going to reserve this space over here for more medical lab stuff because I suspect highly that even with only 37 patients, we are still going to be uh, pretty pressured, really, uh, when it comes to when it comes to our medical labs. Either way, you get a common room, which is lovely. You got a, a fridge, etc. That's all looking good. Happy with that. And that should hopefully improve the should hopefully improve all of the needs of all of the medical labs staff, which is quite nice. Rooms with critical workload, yeah. So rooms with critical workload during the day are basically all x-ray facilities. X-ray or radiology facilities, I should say. Yeah, so both of them, both of them are, are in the x-ray department, both of the, the, the rooms with critical need. We don't actually do any operations in the radiology department over the evening with the exception of x-rays. Mm, not sure how I feel about that. I, I definitely feel like we should be doing x-rays 24-7 if we've got a backlog, right? I mean, it only makes sense to be uh, to be bumping it up as much as we possibly can. There we go. And there we go. The last one. Excellent. Okay, so that's a lot of additional scientists. A lot of additional scientists to, to pay. But I think that we can just about tolerate that. Okay, so 53. 53 patients treated which is an obscenely high number. We did have a death in the morning, which was a bit of a which was a bit of a kicker. However, that spurred us on to get a, a whole bunch of, you know, really important really important uh, extra facilities for the for the infectious the infectious diseases area. Uh you are still waiting. You are still waiting for for a doctor. I mean, you're still waiting for a test result. Is that the issue here? Hmm. I wonder if there is any way that I can sort of like send send test results to a specific place the good news is is that we seem to be on top of our test results like there's no there's no issue there's no issue with the speed now or at least there's not an issue for speed at this moment in time waiting for transport to bed there's there's not enough uh, not enough nurses in internal medicine there's not enough night nurses anyway that's fine i can just about deal with that we actually only have one singular nurse at this moment in time in internal medicine during the day and during the evening which is bit of a problem i would say but that's fine how's our internal medicine department looking honestly it's looking a little bit more it's looking a little bit better than i uh than i originally thought monitored patient is collapsing that's fine renal laceration have you had abdominal surgery you need to be scheduled abdominal surgery that does seem pretty darn important uh so yeah let's schedule that how many surgeries have we got on the on the agenda uh, we can prioritize that at a, at a high level that's fine Let's get you into surgery as quickly as we possibly can, please, Barbara. That's good, and it's the end of the day, which means that we end up, you know, paying a, a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, ooh, diagnose you with that. Asbestosis. Excellent. Employee got drunk last night. That's fine. Okay, 27 patients. 27 flipping patients to deal with. That's all we need to deal with. How on earth... Frank Williams, infectious disease. How did you leave? Why did you leave? I thought you I thought you had your result. Oh, that's unbelievably irritating. That is unbelievably irritating. I thought I thought we had it. Okay. It looks like we need to have like another refreshing refreshing day just to sort of like get everyone out of the system. Get everyone get everyone sort of recovered, get everything back to get everything back to at least sort of semi normality. Again, like yeah, it's not really going to be possible to to operate at a profit here, but we can we can try our best. We can try our best. We've got a, a large staff to support now. Let me just have a little look at the uh, the profit and loss statement in just a second, as soon as we skip forward to uh, to eight o'clock in the morning. Excellent. We're at seven o'clock in the morning, which is when the shift is going to change. Excellent. Room of critical workload. There was only one during the evening. We're down to minus 27k in the bank. But that is completely acceptable given the circumstances. How many infectious diseases people do we have on this ward here? Not many. Okay, so from minus 26,000, minus 26,000 dollars up to... Bada bim, bada boom. It'll take a little while just to filter through. Oh, about, about 10 grand. About 10, 13, about 10, 13 grand. 
Honestly, that's about as much as I was expect. That's that's about fine. And you just magically got up and got better. Wow, somebody came in on the uh, on the stretcher and just magically got better. You love to see it. Truly a Christmas miracle. All right, excellent. I mean, that's that's really good. That's really good, I think. Uh, yeah, so I think that we should have no issues. We should have no issues treating everyone that needs to be treated today. So, profit and loss. How did we do yesterday? Now, if you exclude building, which is what I usually do, we actually made a profit of seven grand yesterday, which was really, really quite good. 17 grand the day before. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. So, I'm going to try not building anything over the course of today. If I do build anything, it will be, like, exceedingly minor. Also... This needs to get cleaned as part of the emergency department, please. If I see dirt anywhere, it means usually that I just need to assign a... Assign a corridor. Assign as a corridor. Yeah, this needs to be assigned as a corridor. Excellent. There we go. Cool. So that's looking good. Looking much better. Uh, not sure what this is doing out here. It's just in the middle of the middle of the road then I clearly have not cleaned it up there we go get my 49 bucks back for selling it love to see it uh, but yeah okay cleanliness of the entire the entire hospital is looking pretty good if I head up a couple of floors we can we can have a little inspection yeah, it looks fine looks fine to me the common room hopefully means that the uh, the staff don't hate me as much prestige I'm looking to try and I'm looking to try and hit higher levels of prestige over here that would be uh, that would be great the more prestige, the better, because we're actually losing patients because of our low prestige level. Our patients, uh, our patients are at eighty-seven percent, eighty-seven percent of the norm, which is fine. So far, we've had two people leave, and did they just did they just walk out because they weren't being seen at the clinic? That, to be honest, seems like the the issue. Uh, yeah, so 27 patients is clearly too few patients. Like, there, there's nothing, there's nothing that my hospital workers are doing at this moment in time. They're literally, they're literally not doing a, a gosh darn thing. So I guess we'll, we'll reopen liver TY. I don't think the patients are going to come today, but some of them might come. And if some of them come, then that's great. Yeah, we still got a whole bunch of patients that are actually in the hospital. 49 patients. I would, I would assess 49 patients as probably an accurate number of, uh, of the ones that we can treat. I would say, anyway, from what I can see. How many how many patients do we have in the isolation units? We have zero patients in the isolation units. And we just got one and two in the regular ward in the infectious diseases area. I mean, that's actually okay. It's actually completely fine. Uh, we do need to purchase a second ambulance. Purchasing a second ambulance. Increase ambulance patients per day to four. Interesting. Uh, according to performed examinations, it's not possible for the patient to have the selected diagnosis. Okay, fine. Get you regularly hospitalized, get you treated quickly as we can, please. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I mean, honestly, maybe we purchase a second ambulance. Ambulances cost 500 bucks a day to operate, but they, they do give you, like, a lot of patients. Like, a surprisingly large number of patients. So we've got... Three ambulance calls from each ambulance at this moment in time, and as I've already highlighted, I think the ambulance calls are uh, are usually more serious and therefore more lucrative. So I'm going to end up going pretty heavily into the hole at the end of the day. Yeah, by about 20, 22 grand. That's about what it costs to run the hospital during the day. Penetrated pancreas laceration. That's fine. Honestly, that was a much more comfortable day. It may not have looked like it, but it really, really felt like a lot more comfortable. We didn't we didn't do any any hospital expansion, which is fine. We don't always have to do hospital expansion. Uh, we will need to do hospital expansion in order to cater for all of the, uh, the Medicare patients, which I do want to do at some point. But 33 patients treated is is not bad given the circumstances. Financially, sure, it wasn't it wasn't brilliant for us, but that's OK. Uh, two monitored patients are collapsing. Can I not get you abdominal surgery, please? Employee leveled up. Excellent. Okay, I think that we should be able to stabilize these patients. Hospitalized, sleeping. Yeah, I think we should be fine. Hopefully nobody's going to die. If they do die, I would really appreciate if they could do it before 12 o'clock. 
midday today, waiting for stabilization. Yeah, I mean, do we need to get a second doctor? What are you doing? You're performing ICU stabilization. I feel like maybe we just get a second doctor for critical care during the day and during the night. Yeah. I, I do think that we do that. And we're also going to get a second nurse as well. The reason that I say this, in fact, we'll get two more nurses. The reason that I say this is that this is a, actually quite an important, quite an important thing to consider is the level of, uh, fine, is the, you know, when things go, when sing, when things go south, people get, people get put into, put into the ICU. If we let them die in the ICU, then, you know, we're going to continue to have continue to have trouble and we're going to continue to have deaths looks like we're going to perform a abdominal surgery which is great love to love to see the surgery team jumping into action uh that is really really good and mostly because mostly because i recognize that that means that there's a filthy big paycheck coming my way 2300 bucks per surgery is not bad it's not bad at all i'll say given that it's not that big of a deal it's just a little bit of abdominal surgery Okay, so purchasing a second ambulance, that may very well be something that we want to do today. However, I think that today, today I will, I will be happy if we don't have any patients that, uh, that leave the hospital. To be honest, I think that that is entirely doable. Let's see if we actually can do it over the course of today. We'll have a little look at the critical workload, uh, when the morning comes around. And we'll see exactly we'll see exactly what the situation is. So far, so good. Two patients treated. Forty-three patients coming to the coming to the hospital today. I think that that is an entirely doable, an entirely doable number. Entirely, entirely, entirely doable. Okay. So again, you know, we we take on about twelve grand, about twelve grand of staff salaries for the night shift. But that's okay. The big money is going to be coming our way in just ten minutes. I'm expecting, I'm expecting 15 grand, I, I think. So I, I would expect this number to say about, you know, negative 23, negative 23 grand or so when we're, uh, when all is said and done and all of the, all of the cash has been tallied up. Looks like I'm not far off in my estimations. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Usually it takes about an hour or so to, uh, to calculate the total amount. Either way, we're, we're technically running a profit throughout the day thus far which is great so i want to stay i want to stay on top of the the number of patients that are waiting in the waiting rooms that is something that i want to stay on top of i also want to stay on top of any problems that arise you know due to patients not being treated or whatever we can always we can always intervene and fix things so we might not end up running a profit today we ended up losing we ended up losing about nine grand yesterday about 10 about 10 grand when you when you factor everything in uh, it's impossible for you to have the selected diagnosis. I mean, that's fine, right? I mean, that's absolutely a-okay. Can give you eardrops as well. Can't be prescribed at this department. That's okay. We can move you to that department and give you eardrops. Excellent. Eardrops, you need to be hospitalized for that, do you? Apparently so. Either way, get that all sorted. Uh, yeah, so we lost 10 grand yesterday. Honestly, completely fine with that. If, if we need to do that from time to time for, uh, for a sort of reset... A reset day then uh, then that's fine where are you charles cole uh, cole you're over here aren't you okay so let's get a stretcher over here as quickly as we possibly can let's move you to the trauma center so that we can fix you up or at least try our very best to fix you up undergo stabilization shouldn't be too much of a problem you've been treated we need to get you diagnosed somehow where do you go from here you can just be triaged in the reception Oh, you've got the bubonic plague. Right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Just, as you do, just casually walking into the hospital with the bubonic plague. I mean, isolation hospitalization, yes. And intravenous doxycycline. Let's cue that up. Flipping egg. Okay, waiting for a bed. Are we... Yeah, we got plenty. We got plenty of space. We got plenty, plenty, plenty of space. The only issue that I have... The only issue that I have is uh, is hopefully everyone's able to be moved over there with not too much difficulty. Are we, are we having somebody come pick up this patient here, please? I don't think anyone's bothered. I don't think anyone is bothered. Oh, thankfully somebody's bothered. Excellent. 
you work for you work for the infectious diseases department so maybe maybe this is going to spur me to to perhaps get another another couple of nurses over here i don't want to go too ott you know we we don't want to end up over complicating things too too much but if we've got if we've got that long of a wait in order to get somebody uh, in order to get somebody a stretcher then it would probably make sense to get a couple of additional nurses. Okay, the trauma center being empty is fantastic. It's really, really good. Monitored patient is collapsing. So you've presumably just been delivered to the isolation room, and therefore, hopefully, the doctors are able to respond relatively quickly. And now you're going to be moved literally all the way back to the ICU. I think you might die, Charles Cole. I, I hate to break it to you. It's not good at all. The problem is that the ICU is very, very far away from everywhere else. Undergoing stabilization. Wow, okay. The good news is, the good news is that the bubonic plague can actually be treated in the ICU. I believe everything can be treated in the ICU. So it is a great, great unit. It's also, like, ludicrously expensive, which is, which is kind of dreadful. And also, once you're in the ICU, it is almost impossible to get somebody out of the ICU. Like, it's really, really challenging. Uh, yeah, the, so the price per bed in the ICU, very, very expensive. You are a lucky one, Carol Hill. You're being moved to uh, internal medicine, which is which is great. Patient is collapsing. You're collapsing with a C. difficile infection. No idea what that is. I guess... I guess you can be... You're still hospitalized, still collapsing. Okay, come on. Go, 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 go. Get them to the ICU, please. Mark Hill. As quickly as you can. All right. At the end of the day, what the heck happened? Uh, we need to look at we need to look at stats. We need to look at stats. How how are how are the rooms looking? Okay. Only one room in the uh, in the X-ray department, in the radiology department, is in critical condition, which is great. Prestige wise, I mean it just dropped a little bit because the shift just started, but I would be hoping for a, a, a decent a decent prestige rating today. It looks like as long as Mark Hill doesn't bite the dust before he gets to the ICU, it looks like we'll be in with a chance of we'll be in with a chance of uh of zero untreated patients, which would be insanely good. Okay, monitor patient is collapsing again. Okay, come on, come on, come on, Mark Hall, come on. Come on. Oh, no, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. Performing first aid. Performing first aid. Oh, no, I don't like, I don't like this. I don't like the look of this. Okay, thank goodness, I think we, we saved him. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Okay, so financially, how are we doing? Actually only lost five grand. Actually only lost five grand. That is that is incredible. Um, and to be honest, shocking. So at the end of the day, it's going to be about six and a half, seven. Something like that, I would uh, I would anticipate once we factor into uh, account the the bank loan, the ambulances, etc. Either way, zero untreated patients, which is great. That wasn't really the aim. The aim was to really assess how many patients can this hospital treat to be honest, wild celebrations of a national holiday cause more injured patients to come. To be honest, I'm okay with that. I'm absolutely okay with that. That is a that is a fine number of patients. I think that, you know, dealing with liver TY and Oopsie Corp, I think that that's an okay number of patients to have. I, I really, really do. Uh, the Research Grant Institute, I would love to, I would love to, to, I'd love to manage to accomplish that. I, I think that this number of contracted companies, progressive, uh, Oopsie Corp and Liver TY. I think, I think that this is a, a good number for our hospital at this moment in time. And actually, with that little patient bonus there, I actually anticipate that we might be able to make a profit. Where do I want to grow my patient numbers from here? Um, probably ambulances. Uh, we've got a lot of missions in the insurance company objectives that ask us to purchase two ambulances, three ambulances, whatever. Uh, so if we could get like a couple of a couple of additional ambulances, then that'll give us like three extra patients at a time because each ambulance brings in this many patients. 
So it's quite a it's quite a controllable number. Uh, you know, we can turn ambulances on and off. So we can really tailor the, the number of uh, patients that we want coming into the hospital. So I think at the moment, our treatment capacity is between like 40 and 60. Anything above that and things start to get slightly, slightly crazy. But yeah, this is this is certainly this is certainly good. Uh, looking at the department overview, what ended up making money, what ended up not making money. Honestly, everything everything made money, really. Everything made money apart from, well, medical labs never makes money. Medical labs and radiology will never make money. Uh, the only thing is that we didn't make that much money or we didn't make any money in the emergency department. I mean, that is fine. I can just about deal with that. Being examined in the trauma center, Nancy over here, and you're being moved up. You're being moved up to the... Uh, to the general surgery department for an operation, which I suspect is probably going to be able to happen pretty quickly. Yep, I uh, I anticipate that you will be you'll be moved to your room and then you will immediately be taken into surgery. Everyone is idle here, but that's okay because we're about to we're about to prep for surgery. I imagine. Nancy, abdominal surgery is queued up. Preparing for surgery. There we go. There we go. It's literally that simple. It's literally that simple. That is that is brilliant. 13, 13 grand down the hole, but that's completely fine. Our first surgery of the day, right on in there. Brilliant. Okay, so how do we do prestige-wise yesterday? Yesterday, prestige was at 86%, which puts our patient intake at 96%. Uh, we need to maybe pay a little bit more attention to the needs of staff and the needs of patients in order to, in order to give us a... A little bit of a steer on where we can take our prestige from here but all in all i've got to be honest the fact that we ended up to seamlessly uh, the fact that we were able to seamlessly add a brand new uh, a brand new department internal medicine which i would like to say is uh, is profitable is profitable it was profitable yesterday it was profitable the day before profitable the day before that i mean look we are making a lot of money in internal medicine uh, the reason that we are making a lot of money, by the way, is because the emergency department diagnoses the internal medicine issue and then the internal medicine department treats it. And of course, because the internal medicine department treats it, they are technically allocated the money. Uh, so the emergency, the emergency department, the emergency clinic certainly is getting is getting a bad deal and it is being made to look bad, even though they diagnosed the vast majority of patients. Uh, either way, I mean, look, I'm happy with this. Only a hundred thousand, uh, only a hundred thousand dollars in debt collapsed patient is waiting for a bed uh yeah why is that the case hospitalized transported to room we're gonna we're gonna address this really soon actually on uh, the coll okay the patient is being moved to another hospital i mean that's not good that's that's not good uh so that's entirely that's entirely look at this yeah so that number becomes one and then goes to zero i mean look i, I seven seven days of of patients of untreated of not of having no untreated patients is a lot to ask for it really is it's it's awful it's a difficult mission to achieve that's for sure uh, but look i think that's a pretty good place to wrap this episode up here folks potentially a second trauma center in the in the next episode almost certainly in fact but i i feel like the hospital is in a really 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 good position at this moment in time it certainly feels like it's in a little bit more of a stable position than it was at the start of the episode infectious diseases is looking much more tidy much more reasonable a good number of patients coming through infectious diseases which is grand nobody's been infected with 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 ebola or your covid or anything like that but it's only a matter of time right anyway folks thank you very much for watching thanks as ever to the fantastic patreon supporters over at patreon.com forward slash the potato also thanks to banana nanana and c senpai for being the two 25 plus tier patrons thanks for watching folks i'll see you next time Bye.